on Divorce Court today. When they met, she thought he was the best looking man she'd ever dated. Now that they're together, Carly has changed her mind. She thinks Jerome needs a job and a shower, and he just wants a little respect. Carly Wiley and Jerome Jackson have brought their dispute for Judge Lynn Toler to resolve. Testimony in Divorce Court starts now. Ms. Wiley, you say he smells bad and he won't work. Why don't you tell me uh, a little bit about the first and then we'll gently move into the second. What's, what's going on with the working? Um, he hasn't been working for the past three, four months. So this isn't a chronic thing, because you two have been together for four years, correct? Exactly, exactly. Did he walk off his job? Did he get fired? Was he laid off? Well, how come he's unemployed? He got fired. Don't you think that that happens sometimes? I mean, it's not like he hasn't been working for years. I don't believe it takes three to four months to find a job, especially if you're highly educated and you speak well. Um, he's, been getting, he's been getting interviews but he hasn't been getting callbacks, so it's like, what are you saying during the interview that's not helping you getting callbacks? And then, like, he'll get a second interview, and he's never not had an issue getting a job before. Most of the time, he'll go and get a job, and they want him based off the first interview. So I believe it's just he just doesn't want to work. He's just comfortable. He's comfortable at so home. So you laying believe back. he's putting out resumes, getting interviews, going to the interview, doing well enough to get a call back, and going back to the call back and blowing it intentionally so he doesn't have to work. <laughs> that, that, or um, he tells me that you know I'm not sure if he's lying or not because he does lie. Mm. So I don't know that if he really is going to interviews. Because I'm not home. I work two jobs. So mm -hmm. I don't know what he's doing at home. I don't mm -hmm. know if he's actually getting called back sometimes. Okay. So what are you really mad about? I mean, it's only three to four months. I don't know if you've taken a look at the unemployment figures or the things with the economy, but things are a little, little, little raggedy out there in the, in the employment well, it's not, field. It's not like he's trying to go and get, like, a major, big corporation job. He's just trying to work little rinky-dink jobs where... One, I mean, some of them, he is a little bit overqualified, so, like, we're, you know... Well, you know, sometimes it, it is hard to open. get a job for which you are overqualified because they don't believe you're going to stay. And so if they, he's, got a, he's got a degree or something and, he, you know, he wants to work at a fast food restaurant, they would say, look, man, I, you know, turnover is hard enough and I know he's going to blow, you know, break camp as soon as he gets something better, so I don't think that is fault. What you really mad about, Ms. Wiley? Is I mean, it because you're working and he's not? Is it because you're working and he's not taking care of the home front when you get home? Is that part of he's it? He's not taking care of the home front either. Well, um, tell me about that. He's not doing laundry. He's not doing the dishes. I have to come home late at night because I work nine to ten hour shifts every day. And I would expect that, you know, if you're home all day and you're not doing anything, you could at least be doing the dishes. You could be doing the laundry. You could at least cook. Mm -hmm. When I come home, I have to cook. And then, you know, seeing dishes pile up in the sink, like, you've been home, like, all since day. all you day. You could have done something. You could have done something, at least something to help me out. That's not true. M Mr. Jackson, what is your, your uh, response to that? As far as the... Where would you like to start? The dishes or the job? We can go... Well, well, we, well let's, start with the, let's start with what's been happening during the last four months when you've been unemployed. Okay. Well, have it's you been, not... It's been two to three months. Uh, <laughs> Everything has been good up until the last, I want to say, year or so. Uh, I developed a situation of uh, a really bad conjunctivitis, uh, and I got let go from my jobs. It right. wasn't because of my work ethic. It's because my employers got upset that my eye wouldn't heal. They were getting complaints from customers saying, we don't want him... It's, it's, yeah, it's, we don't want him around mm -hmm. anymore, around the food corporate office got mad, and they decided to take care of it by letting me go. I think you need to now, elaborate a little bit more. It wasn't just the conjunctivitis, because you brought home a whole list of complaints from your manager. Things like and this. And her like manager the, about you. The whole list of complaints from one particular job. But it started off, the reason, real reason they let me go was conjunctivitis. The other, the other things were they didn't like my haircut. I had a mohawk-shaped uh, haircut mm -hmm. while I was working. Uh, they didn't like the fact that 
I finished work uh, too early, and I made it seem like maybe uh, I didn't have much else to do because when you're at work, you're supposed to work. There wasn't nothing else for me to do. Uh, it was little things like that. It wasn't a whole list. She's exaggerating no, once again. No, you're playing with she the food, too. She exaggerates a lot. Once your employer says, man, I don't like that mohawk, why didn't it come off? Well, here's the thing. They, this is after they let me go. They let me go because of the eye. Then they gave me... Uh, other reasons a, other as well. Reasons. So as far as looking for work goals, I'm a very driven, determined person. Um, it is hard times right now looking for a job. And for the past two, three months, I have been out busting my butt every day, walking, 45 minutes to look for jobs, setting up interviews. I've applied, and I have proof of it, I've applied for uh, 16 different jobs. I've gotten 12, 13 interviews out of those 16 jobs. I'm doing everything I possibly can, and she is complaining so because she's upset. What's really going on, she's upset is the fact I don't have money anymore. Mm -hmm. Now, Your Honor, I'm, I'm going to keep it so 100 with you. Mm -hmm. I have, literally, I've hit bottom. Now, as my woman, what I expect from you is to hold me down. Hold me down. Don't be in it. While you're struggling. While I'm struggling. When, you're, when everything was good, you know, when I got my money, I got my own place, I'm, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm educated, I'm going to school, uh, you know, and, and you like my major, everything is all laugh and, and fun then. But the second thing I hit hard, times. I hit she's, hard she's, times, she's, she's, all she's of a sudden, bolting. you can't put up with it anymore. If you're going to be my woman, then hold me down. Right. Hold me down right now. I'm not sitting on my butt. I'm not sitting on my behind. I am doing everything that I need to do as a man to go get hired. That's okay. And, and okay, I believe... the whole money issue thing, that's fine. You can put up with that. But the whole hygiene and me having to come home... Well, we're, we're, we're going to we're, I'm gonna talk about that now. I, I want to talk I about... Hey, 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 hey! Now hygiene. Hey, Mr. Jackson. I'm going to give you an opportunity to respond to her allegations that when you are home and not working, you don't you know, help her out with the cooking and the cleaning. She's got to work two jobs and cook and clean and take care of that. That's okay, not true Okay, you tell me. That's not true Ms. Wiley, you look, tell me what's happening. Here, well, she's, oh, she God. exaggerates a lot. No, as far as the dishes no, go, we had a few Ms. minor Wiley? altercations about the dishes. She explained to me, oh, I need the dishes done. Did this and that. From where, uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm at or whatever, I'm, I'm still a guy at the end of the day. You know, dishes aren't really our big priority, so moving in with her, you know, you make some adjustments. It's called communication. She wants the dishes done. The least I can do is do the dishes. Mm -hmm. When the money's gone, now if there's one dirty dish in the sink, I'll hear about it for the next three days behind that one dirty mm -hmm. dish. Do, do you cook? Um, no. I, you know what? Lightly, uh, every no. now and then. Uh, no. <laughs> next, how many strangers can Jerome rope into a family argument? For Carly, even one is too many. Have you been living together for years but find that splitting up is as complicated as divorce? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Couples in crisis, real resolution. Divorce Court continues. Ms. Wiley, you say he's just obnoxious. That when you guys go out and you get into an argument with somebody, he pulls in strangers into the argument to try to support his position. Exactly. Why don't you tell me what's exactly. going on with the two of you in public? So, I'm very private. Uh -huh. So, I expect that when we have arguments that they're between, you know, him and I. Mm -hmm. She probably wants Not, to be no, Mr. Jackson, talking. don't interrupt again. Um, it could be we are in the grocery store. It could be we're in the library. It could just be anywhere. And if him and I just so happen to start bickering, he'll get louder. And if he feels as though, like you said, he's not winning the battle or he wants to be someone, someone on his side, he'll pull a couple who's, like, walking by us, like, oh, hey, what do you think about this? Who are they? <laughs> Mr. Jackson, do you do that? I do do that. I do. Well, give me an Why example of a time where you felt... It was necessary to, to get a passerby's opinion on the conflict. Per grocery store. Yeah, perfect, perfect example. Right off the bat. Grocery, grocery store. store. We'll go pick out, I don't know, uh, example, burgers. I wanted some grilled burgers. You know, I, I wanted mm -hmm. to build uh, grilled burgers. I wanted to watch a football game. She gets in the debate with me on why I can't have the burgers. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, I understand she's trying to look out for my health, but I want burgers. I'm tired of eating health food all the time. 
all the time. Everything got to be 100% healthy all, all the time. I want a burger. So there's a gentleman uh, that's... <laughs> There's a gentleman that's walking by with his lady. I pull him aside, and I ask him what he thought of it. He's like, I think you should get the burgers. He agrees with me, you know what I'm saying? And he said, you know, he's like, don't trip. You know, my woman, my woman does the exact same thing. You know what I'm saying? But that's, that's a whole nother issue is her control issue. You know, she's very, uh, very controlling. And that's not the, that's not the when, first When you say know. controlling, I, I understand what's happening with the food, and I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute. Give me a couple of other examples of of things she's controlling about, and you think it's too okay. much. Okay. For example, we're um, uh, when we go when we go out, uh, like uh, we had went out or whatever, and there was an event, a scenario that had took place at a nightclub. We had some drinks, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know things are are you know going smoothly. I see some characters that walk in, look kind of shady. I'm ready to go at this point. I was doing security for a while, you know, so I'll peep. This, I'm good with with movements. And Assessing I, this situation. Exactly. You yeah. know. Um, she wants to stay and drink with her girls, you know, because she's Miss I Can Do No Wrong, I'm Miss Perfect. Everything you say is wrong because you're not making money, um, so nothing uh -huh. you say is important anymore. Um, a few minutes later, altercation breaks out, starts shooting in the club. Now we running everything for our life behind her not listening to her man. When I say it's time to go, it means it's time to go. Another incident was uh, the wallet. We went to the store to go get a wallet. She's arguing with the cashier over $2 for a $2 receipt. It's $2. I'm like, now, I know times is hard, but they ain't that hard. Well, you got to sit and argue for an hour and a half with the lady about a wallet. I'm telling you it's she time to go. She didn't argue for an hour and a half, Ar argue, but No, I'm putting extras yeah. on. She argued for like 30 minutes. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> still, still too long. Still too long to argue, still about, too long, still too long yeah. to argue about a wallet. She, uh, I say it's time to go. Let's go. Forget it. She's like, no. No, no, no. I want $2 off. People are looking at me like, oh, we know who's wearing the pants in that relationship. I'm not respected as a man in public when I'm with her. Any, anymore. And what, oh, hang on. Why won't you let the man have a burger? <laughs> First off, it has nothing to do with the burger. Right now, I am working two jobs so that I were able to pay bills. That's what you're supposed to do. Ms. No, ja Mr. Jackson. I'm not supposed to have you're to work two jobs. Mr. Jackson. You, you Mr. Know. Jackson. No, I'm not. Sit down. Sit down. No, 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 no. Sit down. You may want to be in charge in your world, but there's no question who's in charge in here. Yes, and until you understand that, you're not going to get you're not going to get to say anything. And the next trip is right out that door. I'll hear what she wants. You won't have any rebuttal, and you may be out a couple of grand. When divorce court continues, is Jerome bringing no money home but spending Carly's cash like a crazy man? Carlay says her boyfriend, Jerome, is obnoxious. Do you think he can change and save their relationship? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. He'll also receive some valuable offers. Call now. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and join the conversation on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court continues. You say it's not about the burger. What is it about? He's very frivolous with money, and right now he's not working a job. So I'm counting every last penny to make mm -hmm. sure that bills are being paid on time. I'm not the type of person that likes to pay late bills. My credit is great. His isn't so. And if I have things on, on a grocery list that we need to go by as far as, you know, what needs to be bought, and we might already have some at the house, and you're trying to buy more. Is that what happened, or you just didn't want him to have a burger because it's not the kind of food you want him to no. eat? I've bought ground ground beef. I don't eat ground beef, but he wanted to buy like patties or something like that, and it was more expensive. When I was telling him, "Look, we can just buy, you know, ground beef that's already, you know, packaged. We can make the patties at home." But he wanted everything to be pre-patted, and you know, those are more expensive. So I'm, I'm counting every last penny as possible. And then on top of that, like he didn't, he forgot to mention that we ended up throwing like ground beef in in the grocery basket. He just wanted that to be already pre-patted because he's lazy and doesn't like to cook. So anything that's easy where you could just throw in the microwave. Tell me about what happened in the club. Was, the did club he... never happened. That never happened? He no. just made that up? He just made that up. He lies. He lies a lot. How about the wallet? Did you argue for a half no, an hour about no, $2? No, half an hour, no. 
Um, some people have coupons. We had a coupon. I wanted to use the coupon, and he didn't want to use the coupon. Again, on my dime. So it's just, again, I am counting the little pennies that we have. Well, did you until have an argument with him? I thought you had an argument with the clerk. No, I had gotten into an argument with him in front of the clerk. Mm. Oh, oh. Now, Mr. Jackson, you think you got like some? You got some sense if I I'll stand try. you back I'll, up? I'll try. I'm gonna have to, you know. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, you know, That's the best thing you could have said. Come on up. I'm gonna have to. I got a lot to say, so but uh, I'll, okay. I'll try to. Well, it's almost impossible when two people just literally say it happened, it didn't happen, to to, to discern the truth about Correct. that. She, so why don't you tell me another story that would lead me to believe? that she's the controlling, you know, individual you say she is? Um, I can't get dressed how I want to get dressed. Uh, she spends more time worrying about the way that, you know, what I'm wearing that she doesn't like uh, over her own uh, self. And then if we're late to it, she blames me behind it. I got you. Um, I got you. Let me ask you something else. I... You made a big deal about his hygiene. Yes. Uh, what doesn't he do? Doesn't he... He takes a shower every day, right? Okay. So, his hygiene. Um, he now takes a shower every day, but he'll wait till the whole day goes by. I am now home. Um, and he'll wait almost to the point where either I get home or right before bed, he'll shower. But you've got this whole time window... That makes window. him fresh at the right time! No, 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 exactly. no, 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 no. I'm saying, like, when I get... I've already walked through the door, we've had a conversation, so while I'm already talking to him, he smells. You've got this whole window of time to where the point of you woke up 8 a.m. in the morning to the time I come home at, like, 9.30, sometimes 10 o'clock at night, Gianna. and you haven't showered, yep. and I smell you because you're out running around doing whatever it is that you've been doing, Gianna. and it's just like, why do I have to smell your funk all the time? Well, do I know, need to experience that with you? if in the morning and then was running around and doing everything that he was doing, he'd still be funky in the evening no, because the, if you're the, just the shower at home, doesn't you don't preclude get funky. If you're just funk. chilling at yeah, home, but I'm, not just... no, I'm saying if you're just hanging out at the house afterwards, hours on end, uh, why I'm haven't not... you showered yet? I'm why not... do I have to smell you? I gotta it's shower bad. when Carlay says I gotta so shower. He's so he's home playing like video, video games and he gets that funky. You know what? If we had video games, he would be playing video games. We don't have him in there yet. So what he's is he doing to. at home, do you think? Looking for a job. I don't know. Judge Lynn Zoller's ruling next. Divorce Court. Judge Lynn Zoller's ruling right now. Ms. Wiley, you say you want to be reimbursed for the last three months where he lost his job uh, for half of the rent and the utilities, correct? Yes, it has now come to that because he's just... He's unbearable. He's... And then on top of that, he's very vulgar and... Um, verbally abusive at times, so mm. it's gotten to that. Funny so. how unbearable I get yeah. when the money's not coming yeah. in, right? You wasn't mm. saying that. Ms. Wiley, Ms. Wiley, Ms. Wiley, you're not gonna get the money, because that's not how, how the law works. It's not, I held down the house at this time, so I get reimbursed because you didn't do your half, because you happened to lose your job for 90 days. I think you are persnickety. I think you are holier than thou. I don't believe what you say. He needs to take a shower at the right time, and no then he's filing. Right time to oh, take a don't shower you that say day. another word? I speak, and you say nothing further. This man was holding it down for a long time. He loses his job, and he loses all respect from his lady. You're so narrow. Everything's got to be just the way you want it, and you are outraged by the fact that he's not bringing any money home. You give him no appreciation for the fact that he's fallen on hard times and he's got callbacks and interviews. You've, you've accused him of tanking interviews because he doesn't work. There's nothing in what he's said or what he's done that would implicate that at all. You're just hot about it. You just think you ought to have that. And everything he does while he's not working pisses you off because he's not working. You know, his hygiene didn't all of a sudden change. You just started picking at him because no, you weren't true. getting what you true. wanted from true. him. That is true. Uh, yeah, it is true. That is true. It is true. That is true. Top it up. Ms. Jackson, you're well rid of her. She is not getting reimbursed because you don't get reimbursed. When you're in it together and one of you falls on hard time and the other one has to pick up its slack, it's called being a woman. Try it. 
There will be no recovery this bad if it's so Jerome agrees with the judge's ruling and hopes Carly can learn to change her ways. Post a comment or submit your case at divorcecourt.com or call toll-free 1-877-311-2222. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Divorce Court. On Divorce Court today, Will their power struggle kill this romance? Lilani is hurt that her boyfriend, Donzel, won't take charge in their relationship. He's angry that she always has to get exactly what she wants. Leilani Clark and Donzel Singleton have brought their dispute for Judge Lynn Toller to resolve. Testimony in divorce court before your vows starts now. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Leilani Clark and Donzel Singleton, the two of you are considering getting married, but you're having some difficulty, so you're not quite sure. I've had you take my compatibility tests. I've also uh, asked for your license and also given permission to tear it up should I think that your uh, union is ill-advised. Uh, before we go there, um, I'm going to start with you, Ms. Clark. <laughs> you say your man is a wimp. Mm hmm And that's your biggest problem with him. Yes. Could you explain that to me? Well, basically, he's a weenie. He's a punk. I'm tired of it. He's not man enough for me. I'm too strong for him. For example, okay, um, I had him place an order for me at my favorite restaurant or whatever, mm -hmm. and he had gotten my order wrong, right? So when he came in the house, he gave me my order, and he was, like, hesitating on sitting down with me and eating the food with me and all of that. To make a long story short, whatever, he kept on coming up with this excuse like, oh, let me go do this real quick. Let me do that. He runs out the house, closed the door, then he opened the door or whatever, peep his head through. Are you okay? You all right? The food all right? You, you good? You, all right, I'll be right back. So I'm like, all right, whatever. I'm eating my food. I'm like, this is not what I ordered. And what pissed me off about that situation is because when I gave him my money, I didn't get my receipt back nor my change. And he just disappeared. And it's And just... you mad about that, huh? Where my change at? Where's your I, change? I, I want my change, whatever. Where where my receipt? I still ain't got that or nothing. Can can I get that? You are a habitual liar. Uh, whatever. Now, Mr. Whatever. Singleton. You don't want to go there with me, I ain't. Mr. Mr. Singleton, uh, are you at all fly. distressed yeah. about her description of you as a weenie, punk, mm. and a wimp? Does that mm. bother you at all? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Not go ahead. really, because you are to talk. I, Stop. I look at her, you know, she like the... I'm not going to use the word, but female dog, Your Honor, you know, that's her yeah. attitude. So, you know, I uh -huh. mean... Of course, she would feel Bow, that way, wow. you know. Miss Clark, you know, Miss I mean... Clark, let me tell you something. You may think he's a weenie and a punk and a wimp, but I'm most certainly not. And if you keep that up, you go right through that door, mm -hmm. and she, he and I will I finish our proceedings now. alone. And you're losing the rational war right here already, you know. But anyway, so it doesn't bother you. Well, first of all, Your Honor, I don't have to run off with no change or anything. I give her more whatever I have on me before I run off with anything. So that's a lie. She likes to lie for some reason. She likes to fill herself and pump herself up. You know, like I said, you know, she's a female dog. You know, I'm going to just leave it at that, her attitude-wise. Well, you say so. she's so argumentative that you refuse to have a conversation with her unless you're in public. I mean... No, Wait. that's not true, Your Honor. I, I, I like to talk to Leilani about stuff all the time, but it's like she's Damn. always over-talking me. It's like we could just be talking about something on TV, and I might be like, oh, the game is on. She'd be like, oh, well, you know, you're not playing for him, so, you know, why are you watching it? Like, what? Like, you know, so it's like... Just looking for a reason to be angry. Just any reason, <laughs> anything, Your Honor, so... Ms. Clark, does anything that he just said have a ring of truth to it? Yeah. 
He, so will you get mad if he has the game on and, and, and say things to him like, well, don't you don't... He don't pay no bills in the house, y'all. He don't do nothing. He don't clean up. He don't do no laundry. He don't help me take care of my daughter. He don't do nothing. All he do is stay going all day long at his friend's house and all of that while I'm at work and at school. Then I got to come home and clean up after him, still cook for him, still do the laundry, do all of that stuff. And then when he do come home or whatever, he's online. Looking at, excuse my French, can I please say this word? I don't know what it is. Why did, well, say, say it and I'll let word, you know. I don't want to get kicked out the courtroom or nothing. I won't get kicked out. You, you know, ask no permission. It's cool. He look at bitches that look like Chewbacca, yo. I right? Chewbacca. Chewbacca, yo. Chewbacca. Oh, Chewbacca. Whatever. Yeah, those, those things. Those. All of those. All of that. Okay? Now, Mr. Singleton, look at this. Let me ask you this. Are you not working? Are you not contributing? And you're just kind of around? Because that would tend to upset a person. That's true, Your Honor, but it's not true, everything that she's saying, because I do help out whatever I can. I do odd jobs. All I did let my guard card expire, but I have a new one that's coming. You let your what card expire? My, I do security, Your Honor, and I let my guard card that expire. That was two so that years was ago, Your Honor. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. So, do you feel like that in the absence of having some income that you should do other things to support and help her out? Yes, I do. I love her daughter. I love her daughter like it's my own daughter, Yarna. Mm -hmm. She loves me too. And I do clean up around the house. I do mm -hmm. stuff that she does do. She's very messy. She's cluttery. Stuff mm -hmm. be all over the place. She try to act like yeah, she you just be this picking up your shoes and your Hang on, Miss Clark. Right. Do, you live like there though. You live there though, right? Right. And you work you're home all day. And she's keeping a roof over your head and food right. in your belly. Right. Why would you expect her to keep the house clean as well? Isn't that the thing that you could contribute? And that's what I do, Your Honor, but it's never enough. It's always something. It, I can clean up and she'll like toss stuff around and make it dirty again so I can have something else to do. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, like, what's going on? You don't do nothing. You don't go to work. You don't do your laundry. You don't do nothing. It's not true. Of course, you're going to have to do the same. You got to put on your socks and your shoes, well, right? Maybe if you're you got to take your shower, attitude right? a little bit. You want your hey, 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 hey. Right? Cool. Miss Clark, hey, Mr. Singleton. Me like Singleton. A man and stop uh, treating me like I'm some You got one foot, okay. Mr. Mr. Okay. Singleton. You got one foot out the door, Miss Clark. You got I'm one foot out the I'm door. You say, I apologize. You say, interestingly he's enough, a little hot -headed. that he's not affectionate. No. Now, given your behavior in here, <laughs> do you find it odd that the man does not find time or, or the inspiration to be affectionate with you? Yes, I do. We all human. We all need love. We all need affection. We need all of that. What's wrong with me? Come on now. I'm a diva. Uh -huh. I look good. <laughs> you are. Are you done? <laughs> Do you think that his lack of affection for you has anything to do with your lack of respect for him? Yes. So how can you complain about lack of affection when you're not handing over any respect? He don't deserve any respect. Until he start paying some bills in the house, and until he start rubbing my feet, rubbing my back, running my bath water, doing something, anything, I don't care if he go out and panhandle. He got to do something. Something. You just feel unsupported. Exactly. And you feel like you just keeping a Flip roof over his head and he's some, not doing anything. Go sell some hats for a dollar a piece. I don't care. I, you feel me? Can you get a part-time job or something? I mean, if I were you, I'd get a job just to get out of the house. So what, um... <laughs> Next, how did arguments and retaliation ruin Donzel's proposal? Is a third wheel causing problems in your relationship? Call toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Real people, real conflict, real judgment. Divorce Court continues. Mr. Singleton, you say you have never won a fight with this woman. Is that accurate? Never will. That's about right, Your Honor. I mean, it's, it's hard to get in a word with her, because it's like, I could compliment her, Your Honor. 
And she'd be like, well, it doesn't matter coming from you, you know. And I'm like, well, why am I here? I mean, if I'm so bad and this and yeah, that, why don't you just go find you a, what you want, a superstar what or whatever, because I'm not, I mean, I'm just me. Right. I could just be me. And if you want She's, something else, then go they, get that. Then go get something else right. and quit bothering you. Right. Now, having said that, let me say this. Why do you stay? He's from It Giannis. doesn't seem to make any He's sense to me. No, no, Yana, I'm going to explain to you. No, it's the other way around. I try whatever. to get away. I've tried to get away. Well, she finds Ms. Clark? Me. This woman is crazy, Yana. She will find me. I can move out of the country. Somehow, some way, she will find me. Literally. Do you chase him about? No, that's a lie. So you don't, when he leaves, you don't go searching for him? Well, you know, he, <laughs> he be having his stuff at my house and all of that. That's all, that's the only reason why I go look for him and all of that. It ain't like I want him back in the end to come home and I just want him to get his stuff and go. That's all it is. That's why I look for him. That's why you look for him to uh -huh. tell him to go? To come get his stuff, yeah. Okay. Now, Mr. Singleton, for some reason I have yet to understand, you decided you were going to propose to her on Valentine's Day, but at the last minute, in a rush of rationality, you decided not to. Explain to me what happened last Valentine's Day. Okay, Your Honor, I'm going to go back a little further than that. It was Christmas time. You know, uh -huh. we, we had kind of had a little argument or whatever, and I left for a few days because I was tired. Oh, I mean, we, we was arguing too yeah, much. Right. I'm talking about, like, day in, Sit day out. out. You know... I'm just, sorry, go right ahead. I just got tired of arguing with her, and I was like, you know what, if it's this bad, I need some time to myself. It wasn't like I was going to see another woman or anything like that. I just needed to get away from her for a few days. So, you know, months pass or whatever, you know, I got all this stuff together for, you know, I had dinner, I had a room. I mean, we was, I was like, man, I'm gonna propose to this woman. I know we go through our stuff, but I'm gonna show her I'm a man. So I'm getting ready to propose and everything, and out of nowhere, she's just like, hold up, I just want to let you know, back, remember back in Christmas when we got into it? Yeah, I cheated on you. I'm like, what? So you wait two months to tell me that? Not only did it happen on Christmas, but you wait to Valentine's? So I'm like, you're going to hell. You know, them two Happy special Valentine's holidays Day. right there. You know, so... Happy Valentine's Day. You know. <laughs> Ms. Clark, do you think if I let you stand back up, you can act like you got some sense? Uh-huh. You sure? I I'm gonna knock it back in. All right, okay, Ms. Clark, come on up. Did you take the opportunity on Valentine's Day when he's about to propose to tell you that when you had an argument months ago that you cheated on him? Yep. Why? <sighs> Valentine's Day with, with that thing? Let's cut to the chase here. Why are you people here? It's not you, you're together, you got a marriage license here. What for? I mean, Especially... <laughs> Why don't you run when you can? I do, Your Honor. I do. Every chance I get. <laughs> I do. She will find me. <laughs> I'm going to have to run a little farther this time, Your Honor. <laughs> Why did you come to ask whether or not I thought it was a good idea for you to get married if you have absolutely no love for this man? I mean, you know, I care about him and all of that. You know, he's a good person. He's a good man and all of that. And, you know, I... Well, it, at this juncture, I, I normally ask people to give me a 90-second sales job on why you believe that the person to your left or to your right should be the person that you're going to spend the rest of life with. I'm scared to ask it, but I'm going to have to do it because I, I don't even, you know... Yeah, I know. I, 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 hey, because oh, I'm just fascinated to find out what you people have to say about that. When divorce court before your vows continues, can a 90-second declaration of love put this couple back on track? Do you agree with Donzel that Leilani is too difficult and demanding? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call now, 1-800-282-1991. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and join the conversation on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court Before Your Vows continues.
Mrs. Clark, I'm going to give you 90 seconds to tell me why Mr. Singleton is the man for you. And, you know, really impress me with this, because so far, it's looking pretty ugly. So tell me why Mr. Singleton, over all the men that you know and who will put up with you, <laughs> uh, do you want to marry Mr. Singleton? Yeah, I do, but I feel kind of bad and guilty because we've been going through a lot within our relationship. And I felt as a woman, and by him being a man and being my spouse, that it would only be the right thing for us to get counseling or some kind of help with our relationship. That's why we are here today. I took it upon myself to admit my wrongs. I hear what you said, but it didn't answer my question. <laughs> you know, and I understand a lot of people have difficulties getting along, but like when I was single and I was having trouble with my boyfriend, I'd just get rid of it, <laughs> get another one. <laughs> now, I cut that out when I got my husband, because you can't get rid of him. You know, I, I, I worked it out. Why do you want to work it out with him? I said, give me a 90-second sales job on why you love him. And you said, yeah, I do, but I feel bad and guilty. You didn't say anything nice about him. You didn't say what you liked about him, what you found appealing. You know, okay. work with me. Fine. He's it's sexy, OK. He got skills. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. I'm being honest, y'all. I, I appreciate it. I do. <laughs> He's sweet. And he put up with my BS. And puts up with you. And put up with it to the bone. Even if it drive him to the nut house. Now, Mr. Sing I, I'm not even going to rate that one. I'm just going to move over here to Mr. Singleton, and I'm going to ask you, why in the world would you want to marry her? 90 seconds, sales job. Tell me something I can't see. <laughs> OK, Your Honor, um, I'm going to be honest. Despite everything that we've been through and we're going through and all that, she's a very good woman at the end of the day, outside of her faults. like. You know, she's strong. It's hard to find beautiful women that's still got your back, that, that you don't have to turn your back every minute. Despite what she did, like, you know, it happened. It's in the past, whatever. She's still a good woman. And I can count on her for a lot of things as far as just, you know, like she said, I'm putting up with her, but she's putting up with me too, Your Honor. And, you know, I respect her. I really do as a person, as a friend, as a future wife, possibly. You know, I love her, I'm gonna be honest. OK. You did better than I thought you would do. But it, 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 it didn't fill my heart. That there were no tears, no goosebumps, no nothing. So having done that, and I have all of that, we want to go on to uh, the compatibility test. You both filled it out. Yours was deep. <laughs> Judge Lynn Toller's ruling next. It's time for you to call 1-800-282-1991 to answer today's question. You'll receive some valuable offers. Call now. Divorce Court, Judge Lynn Toller's ruling right now. In the compatibility test, Ms. Clark, you said a couple of interesting things. I asked you if there's something your intended should probably know before you marry them that they don't know now, and you said, she said, I want to have an open relationship outside of marriage to keep it going. Mm. Were you aware that that is, was her intention? No, Your Honor. Has she ever discussed that with you before? No, Your Honor. Did you say it just to alarm me, or do you really believe that? I really believe that. And when you say open relationship, you mean you think you should have sex with men other than him? Yes. Why? To keep the fire going. I'm going to spend the rest of my life with him. Not anymore. So it's like, you know, got to keep it going and all of that. I'm sorry, y'all. Why do you That's how marry? I feel. That's what I believe. Because I love him. I've been with him too long. You how know? long you been with him? Well, not too, too long. Two years. Two years? Mm -hmm. That's not long. <laughs> not long at all. What did you say? Not long at all, Your Honor. Not anymore? 
Yeah, I'm good. Don't sit. Mr. Singleton, I mean, you, ooh, run and don't look back. <laughs> You're a good guy. There are a lot of good women out there looking for a good guy, and you don't have a good woman right there. She, you know, she may be interesting and fun, and I'm sure she's just not as off to chain as she normal life as she came in and here, but right now she's just looking ugly and wrong and you just don't need to have to deal with that. So move on, be happy, get your guard card back and take your money elsewhere because you two need not get married. The couple respects the judge's ruling and Donzel has moved on to a new relationship. Post a comment or submit your case at divorcecourt.com or call toll free 1-877-311-2222. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Divorce Court. On Divorce Court today, it was love at first sight between a DJ and a woman in this club. But now that Shakir and Barbara have gotten together, he's playing a sad song. Should these two stay on the road to marriage? Barbara Woodford and Shakir Bahati have brought their dispute for Judge Lynn Toler to resolve. Testimony in divorce court before your vows starts now. Woodford, Ms. Bahati, the two of you have been dating for a while. You believe you want to get married, but you're not quite sure, so you came here to get my opinion. You've given me your marriage license with permission to tear it up, should I think the union is ill-advised, and you've also taken my compatibility test. Before we get to either one of those things, I'm going to start with you, Ms. Woodford. Why do you love him, but are not sure that marriage is the thing to do? I love him because he's a genuine, good person, and he has a lot of great qualities about him, but there's just a couple of little things that could be fixed about now, him. Now, what do you what do you think he needs to tweak? Everything, um, Mr. Bahati. One of it is an inability to to follow rules. Do you know what the rule is in here? You don't speak until I talk to you. Simple one. Go ahead. Okay. Um, just little things. I mean, one thing is. Uh, hygiene. Oh. He doesn't smell or anything like that. It's just that I have to seem like I have to tell him or remind him to take a shower. Um, he's a grown man. I feel like I should not have to remind you to take a shower. I shouldn't have to tell you to take a shower. It's just you go to the gym, you sit down for a minute, okay, you go to the shower. You don't come to the, go to the gym, come upstairs, sit on the couch for three, four hours, sit in your own little sweat, and then later on take a shower at 12 o'clock at night. I just, I just, that bothers me. It frustrates me. Mm -hmm. um, that's one thing. Another thing is he just, just so, he doesn't understand a lot of things about the world, just like finances, just What like, doesn't he understand about finances? He just does he knows how to give the money, pay the bills, but he doesn't know everything that comes along with it. Um, such as what? Um, such as credit, um, and something you need to build. I mean, we're both in our uh, mid-20s and we're getting older and it's just something that you build with age. Uh, and Hang he just on, Ms. Woodford. I, I, I think I see, see where you are right now. Mr. Bahati, do you want to... First of all, you do not have to respond to the hygiene thing if you don't want to. I never yeah, make, make a person because, have to do uh, that. Because that's false. Uh, I take showers all the time, but sometimes <laughs> when I come from the gym, I like to sit down and relax yeah, for, for a minute, hours. watch a little TV. Mm -hmm. But what she's talking about with this finances and stuff, I just be focused on right now, the moment. I don't think about five, ten that. years from now. Mm -hmm. That's just my way of thinking. So right. she can Do get that out of Do you see any benefits in, in, in thinking ahead with respect to money? I mean, the money? world might end tomorrow. I mean, I'm living for right now. Right. And 
But I the odds take, are the world won't end tomorrow, I but mean, the bills will know. show. You never know. No, no, you never know. You, you never, never know. know. So right now I'm just taking care of the bills, taking care of my little six-month-year-old, taking care of her, her hair, her nails, her everything else. You see, she thinks she's fancy. If you look at her right now, you know. Hair but done. let me ask you this, Ms. Woodford. Is the problem really that you picked up and moved to be with him and now you're feeling uh, like, ooh, what did I do? Because you're feeling vulnerable? Yes, I feel like I've been bamboozled. Like, I've been... been like, he put on a, a whole act or something because it's just not the same. But, but I, tell I, me how he used to be uh, and how he is now. It I makes you feel bamboozled. When we first started dating, and um, how he got me out here, it was very, it was very genuine, and um, I felt like he wasn't gonna let me down, and everything was gonna be okay. Well, hang on, hang on. Let's let, let, let's back up a little bit. You were both in Philadelphia. No, no, no. I'm you were from in Los L Angeles. You Los I Angeles. You were working. in Philly. No, I we did. I live. I'm from Philadelphia, but that's not where we met. Where did you meet? We met in D.C. In D.C. Uh -huh. And at some point, she was you, on me. you left yeah. D.C. and moved to L.A. Yeah. At your behest, did you ask her to come or did she yeah, just show? I, I asked for her permission, her uh, mother's permission. Mm -hmm. I wanted to take her and uh, start, a, start a family, start a whole nother life mm -hmm. with her uh, in Los Angeles. What is he doing now that makes you believe that he misrepresented himself or that is not appropriate now that you've made the move. That's I don't, it. I'm not hearing that. Now that I made the move and I'm here under him and I'm here with him, things has just changed. I mean, he's cheap for one thing. Um, and he just seems like he has a very, like, he's like feeling himself now because I have to go to him for things I need or want. And it, and it never was like that with me. I always had my own. So it felt like I think he's like feeling himself right now because you I need he's him. He's in charge right. because you right. you are out here, you have nothing, and right. he needs to take care of it. And basically now, what, starting over. Are you sure it's not you that feels that way? Mm -hmm. Next for this couple, which is worse, Barbara's weave hair in the sink or Shakir's cheap behavior? Your mama warned you not to marry your mate. If she was right and divorce is your best option, call toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Broken relationships, real solutions. Divorce Court continues. So I'm trying to understand this, Ms. Woodford. Is there something he's doing or saying that is different that is making you feel like uh, he's changed since you've made that move? Yes, he does a lot of things that makes me feel different and that, he, that he's changed. Give me some examples. Um, we would go out all the time. He would buy me things and so on and so forth. And now that I'm here and he has like responsibility and I'm pretty much his responsibility, he just becomes so cheap. Like he's just so cheap. I mean- How cheap is he? Real cheap. We went to <laughs> crustaceans. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you ever hear that? I, I've, I've eaten there. Okay, very nice very restaurant. Good. Yes. So, you know, he says, let's go out to eat at a nice restaurant. He just came back home and, you know. So we do that. But I didn't know he was going to leave a $10 tip for a 200 and something dollar bill. I was so embarrassed. Like, I, I had to leave before the waitress got back because it was very Mr. embarrassing. Why did you leave a $10 tip on a $200 bill? Well, I, I went there to eat. I didn't go there to tip. So the food is already expensive. <laughs> and like I always tell her, if we gonna eat, you tip. They already making their their their, their no, wages. You know what already. they make? You know what I they make a really, lot less. I don't really care what they make. I know for a fact they in there making money. And if I leave a ten dollar tip, that's what it is. If you wanna leave more, you could add something to the tip. I'm not about to be sitting here tipping. They can get gallons of gas with that ten dollars. And they have regular <laughs> customers that come in here all the time and that leave nice tips. 
So that's my take on it. But tennis. it's not going to be you. It's not going to be me. Mr. Bahati, Ever. why don't you... We've been... Why don't you tell me what you think the problem is? Why you're not so well, sure whether the, you want to marry her? The problem is she feel like I'm, I'm always giving. Give, 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 give. Enough is enough. I'm ready for her to turn up and turn back around how she was in Philly, working, taking care of responsibilities, buying me things. I don't even ask for nothing. All I ask for is for you to cook, to clean. She leaves a mess in the, with her hair all in the sink. His hair all in the sink. You what, know, is she leaving a weave all yeah, over? Yeah, the weave all on the, in the sink. I can't even brush my teeth anymore. I got to look at that hair ball mess. Makeup all smeared across the counter. So you're saying what she did is came out here and got comfortable. Yeah, got she too, not worried about the food, not worried about the nothing, not worried about I, bills, yeah. just there. If you're going to be there, you need to cook, clean, be a wife, you know? Right now, it's not going the way I, I thought it was going. Are you doing less than you could to make yourself an Tell active and meaningful mm -hmm. participant in the relationship that you're in? I feel like I am doing what I'm capable of doing right now. Um, no, I don't work right now. Mm -hmm. um, but in, lieu, in, in lieu of that, though, do you keep it cool at the house? I mean, my mother yes, never yes, worked, I do. but the house was cool. Yes, I do. I no. keep the house cool. I keep his... He always has clean laundry. That's he easy. has... The, the bed is made. Everything is always clean. I cook probably at least four times out of the week. No, you want to go my, out four times out of the week. I keep my dinner, baby clean. So you tip, I keep so you tip the waiter. Stop, stop, stop. I keep everything together. Um, he's on the road all the time. He's Working. cheap. Are you going to pay a nanny? He doesn't think about all of these things that come along with things. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, he's Would just Would you so... be satisfied if she was doing better at the house and not working? Would that be sufficient for you? No. She can I do whatever she wants to do. If it takes her to work and to get a job, I'll figure out the baby situation with a nanny. I got plenty of people that can watch my baby and I'll pay them. That's not the problem. She's just lazy. He don't want to pay She's nobody. Lazy. You hear that? You know, Mr. Bahati, you, you get what you pay for, and you right. do, you going to pay for, you know, give janky money for a babysitter, you get a janky babysitter. No. And, you and don't it doesn't matter if it's family or not. When divorce court before your vows continues, can Shakir overcome the anger he feels about Barbara? Do you agree with Shakir that Barbara has grown lazy since moving to LA? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call now. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and join the conversation on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court Before Your Vows continues. Mr. Bahati, you seem angry. And I, I was, I'm going along here, and for a minute, you know, this is a Before Your Vows where two people come in, they're considering getting married, and... They love each other, and like halfway in, I thought I was in a divorce case. I had to look back at my paperwork. You seem very too through. Are you too through, or are you in it? You just want to get it together. I'm in it, and I'm willing to get it together because I do love her. I like her. She had my baby, my first child. So I'm willing to do whatever it takes to work it out. I'm just tired of the laziness. If I go overseas or anywhere, I expect to come back with a meal on the table, clean house. Sometimes I don't get that, and I just like that. Do, She's do, claiming that she cleaned up all this stuff, and all. but like I said, I still see hair in the sink. Mm -hmm. I still see makeup on the counter. It's nasty to me. I gotta call a maid. Ms. It's Ms. nasty to him. He don't even shower every day, but that's nasty to him. You think he call a maid? Do you think he call a maid? He don't leave a ten dollar tip. Do you think he called call a maid? Let's be serious. Hey, let, let, let's before. stop here. Let's stop here for a second. And, and, and there's something that I always like to do is I said, you know, you're considering getting married, so you should be able to tell me, give me a 90-second sales job on why, above all others, Mr. Bahati is the guy for you, okay? Now, now think about it. Sales job. You trying to make me believe that I should give you back your marriage license. So here we go, Ms. Woodford. Tell me why he's it. Mr. Bahati is right for me. He's a good, genuine guy. He's a great father. 
He is a sweet person, um, a great personality. That's what attracted me. And I feel that he's a very, he's just a very genuine, good hearted person. I have expressed more passion and love for the guy, the clerk at the grocery store, <laughs> than you just did for Mr. Mahati. That was sad, weak, and tired. He's a genuine, I know a lot of genuine people. Mr. Bahati, let's pretend that didn't happen. Let's just pretend that didn't happen. And I'm gonna give you a good, clean 90 seconds for you to tell me why Ms. Woodford is the woman for you. Go. Ms. Woodford is the woman for me because she stepped, she's just been there by my side the whole time. She hasn't left. She hasn't did anything stupid to tarnish the relationship. She's a great mother. She's just, just the most coolest woman I've ever met, um, just inside and out. She's a great cook. Uh, she's, she's just the best woman, you know, mm -hmm. that I've ever met. And she's like my best friend and I care about her. That's why she got a ring on her finger and I want to continue with her. He did a lot better than you did <laughs> and he only got a C. <laughs> Judge Lynn Toller's ruling next. It's time for you to call 1-800-282-1991 to answer today's question. You'll receive some valuable offers. Call now. Divorce Court, Judge Lynn Toller's ruling right now. Ms. Woodard, in your compatibility test, you claim that Mr. Bahati is a, an emotional crybaby. Yes, I did. He doesn't that seem that way. What do, you, what do you mean by an emotional crybaby? He just wants people to feel bad for him all the time. Every time we get in an argument, I always have to be the one that consoles him. I always have to tell him I'm sorry. I always have to, like, beg him for forgiveness or just to... I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I'm a cancer, Your Honor. So what? That's, that's, that, that, that's a cancer trait. Yeah, but that's no excuse. I can't believe people still talk Sometimes that stuff in this day and age. we get sensitive. But we are loving Ms. and caring Ms. people. Mr. Bahati, there is absolutely nothing wrong with being sensitive. And I don't think you have to defend yourself. I, I, I support you in that. I think, it, I think women spend a lot of time asking men to be sensitive mm -hmm. and kind and, and caring. And with that comes emotional and an occasional bucket of tears. And if, you know, hey. Tell him. Don't. Look. No! Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm gonna do this right now just so nobody's confused. Here's what you did wrong. You got up and moved somewhere without any support, any way of, of uh, and you're scared. You cannot get up and leave on the promise of a tomorrow. You cannot give up your family, your support system, your education, and go hop off with somewhere with somebody and expect to feel secure. I don't know how much he has or has not changed, but I know if you've got any sense at all, you don't feel totally and completely safe because you've given up all of the things that held you up and made you strong on your own. You put them away, and then you bounce with this guy. So you are dependent upon him. You're subject to his whims because you put yourself in that position. And I bet it's messing with your head. It would mess with mine. You got a kid with him, and you're just out there. Mr. Bahati, you know, I'm cheap, too. And I get it. You know, you like to hang on to your money. I like to hang on, but I don't cheat people. And I think when you have service like that and those people are dependent on tips to make their money, you're cheating them. And if you're one of these brothers who believes that the, that the world is going to end tomorrow, like you said, you know what I mean, why don't you go out a good guy? I bet you you want to get paid for what you do for a living. I expect you want to get paid the going rate and its value and its worth. And how can you get that if you won't give that to other people? You need to think about that for a moment. Listen, I think that the two of you need to go to marriage counseling because I don't think the two of you know what a good relationship is. I don't think you know how to have a conversation. I don't think you know how to compromise. Don't. I don't think you know how... You, I don't even think you know what marriage requires. So I'm going to get you started with somebody to talk to because you need to do a whole process, a whole course, a whole months and months of, of stuff before you get married. 
but I want you to continue to pursue that because you had a baby together. Don't have babies before you already have the guy. Don't do it. It puts you in a very insecure position. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and you need to remember that she is feeling insecure and scared, and you need to uh, acknowledge that with uh, kindness, love, and care, and, and, and a responsiveness to the concerns that you have. You know what, you know what I'm saying, Mr. Potty? Yeah. I don't think you're a bad guy at all. I'm not. Uh, not at all. And if he wants to take an hour before he gets in the shower, leave that not man alone. Not an hour, alone. it's not an hour. Well, if it's two or three. If I want to play, day. If I wanna play my video game, the next play day. Ms. Woodford, you're, woo! Don't be that kind of wife. You know what I mean? Don't. Nag. Oh, nag and point and pistol and all this kind of stuff. Don't do all that. You work on yourself. You know what I'm saying? I agree. Mm -hmm. This matter is. <laughs> Barbara and Shakir agree with the judge's ruling and are working to build a solid foundation for their relationship. Post a comment or submit your case at divorcecourt.com or call toll-free 1-877-311-2222. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Divorce Court. On Divorce Court today. Can a chat line start a strong marriage? Jervon and Russell thought so, until they each found out that cheating was rampant all through their four-year union. Jervon Thacker and Russell Thacker have brought their dispute for Judge Lynn Toler to resolve. Testimony in Divorce Court starts now. Mrs. Thacker, this is your sixth marriage. You're 44 years old, and from what I can tell from my paperwork, it's about every four years you get rid of one. You've been married to him for three and a half. <laughs> Hence, we are here. You are suing him for alienation of affection. And it's a lot of things that people don't believe you can do anymore, and you can in some states, but there are very specific rules to it. We're gonna talk about it after you tell me what the facts are, and I can make a determination of whether or not this is something that you can, in fact, sue, sue for in the circumstances. But I want you to get start out. Why do you think you have to get a new guy every four years? Well, first of all, all six of them, well, all five of them were crazy. They had issues. Mm -hmm. I had one that was a crackhead. I had one that was a womanizer. I had one that was a habitual liar that believed his own lies. I had one that was a mama, mama's boy. I had one that was an alcoholic, and then there's him. And what's wrong with him? I met Mr. Thacker about four years ago on a chat line. So I should have probably known then that it was gonna be some issues. So we talked for a little bit, I guess uh, about four days, and then we actually met. Mm -hmm. But when I opened the door, he wasn't all at all what I expected. Mm -hmm. He wasn't my type. He's, I don't even know why I end up dating him, because I usually date, you know, doctors and lawyers, and he showed up to my house with a Sanford, a Sanford what do you call it, a Fred Sanford truck and some dirty tennis shoes. So I, I began to keep talking to him, and I kept talking to him, and he had an interesting conversation. He's very articulate. Mm -hmm. So then I learned that his family had a little money. So I said, hmm, okay. So let's just kind of stick around and see how this goes. So I did, and after a year of dating, we ended up getting married, um, but nothing, nothing like spiked it. I mean, nothing like happened. He was always dirty. He would leave his clothes on the floor. Now, mind you, his family had money, so he was born with a platinum spoon in his mouth, and he had a housekeeper. So he always had the housekeeper to run behind him and pick up his clothes. Well, when he got married, he thought I was gonna run behind him and pick up his clothes. So wherever he take his clothes off... No, no, that's not true. That, yes, it is. Hang on, hang on, I'm gonna get He to leaves you. his clothes in the middle of the floor thinking I'm the housekeeper. So I'm not his housekeeper. Ms. Zach, <laughs> you have said so many ratchet things <laughs> so <laughs> early in this proceeding. Most don't know where to start. You came out here and said 
you had a crackhead, a pathological liar, a, you know, I don't even know all the... And he said, I normally date doctors and lawyers. I wasn't going to date him because he was a little raggedy, but I found out his parents had money, so I thought I'd <laughs> stick with him. If money is your criteria, you're going to get all kinds of crazy people who aren't worth anything other than the money. That's just a word to the wise. Mr. Thacker, did you know that she felt you were worth her time because your parents had some cash? It didn't matter to me. Um, I was interested in her for who she was mm -hmm. and not for her looks, not whether she had money or didn't have money. I knew what I had, uh, had, past tense. I knew what I had at the, at the present time, okay? I have a good, I had a good job. Still have, have a the, job. Still have the same job uh, for the last four years. But didn't it worry you that she didn't really want you for who you were, but more or less what she would be able to attach herself to economically? Well, see, here's the thing. I knew that she had all those previous husbands, and I knew that I wasn't like that. I knew that wasn't like that. So, yeah, I was born with a platinum spoon in my mouth. My father left us his construction company when, when he passed away. And, um, you know, from that point, I carried myself the way that, you know, I needed to be done. So it didn't worry you that that was... No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you say your the marriage... This current marriage took a turn for the worst in January. What happened? Well, again, Your Honor, it wasn't really my type of hype from the beginning, but I stuck it in. But in January, we had to move back to my hometown. He didn't want to go. And so when we moved back, we ended up having to live with some relatives, or some relatives lived with us. Mm -hmm. It was my mother. Okay, so my mother and Russell don't get along. They don't see eye to eye whatsoever. She says that Russell, you know, is his family, they're used to money, and he's bougie, and this and that, and, but he's not. You mm -hmm. would think from having a housekeeper that he would clean up after himself, but... Well, she was just mad because I didn't grow up in the projects. That's what that was. Oh, you saying I grew up in the projects? No. Oh, okay. No. But anyway, Your Honor, you were talking How to me... How could he be bougie and he's, he's driving a Fred Sanford truck? This is my mother's perspective on him being oh, bougie. I, I knew you. what it was. See, when he come around everybody else, this is what he do, he dress up. Uh -huh. But I live with him. So I know that, you know, he's dirty. He don't shave his head. He don't brush his teeth. I know all of this stuff. So... You brush your teeth, don't you? No. Mr. Back. Okay. She's exaggerating and lying. I am not lying. So, anyway, Your Honor, because you are talking to me. I am. Okay. So, anyway, what happens is his daughter came to live with us, and it became chaotic from there. So we've just been one thing out there. But to top it off, the real reason is because we stopped having sex. We don't have sex. I haven't had sex since May of 2013. We stopped having sex. Oh, she knows the month and everything. She, she, why do you think you stopped having sex? Well, Russell has some health issues that he needs to go and get seen about because he's always tired. He says it's because he's on the road. He works on the road as a photographer. So you can't be that tired, Holly. Get photos, get your photos. You can't be that tired from doing that. He's tired and he don't wasn't he doesn't want to have sex because he's tired and he's sick and all of no, this. I stuff. love to have sex in the morning. When I try to have sex with her in the morning, she turns me away. <laughs> Next, what is your bond's insistence on keeping sub hugs or substitute husbands done to Russell and their marriage? Have you been living together for years but find that splitting up is as complicated as divorce? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Divorce Court. Real relationships, raw emotion. Testimony continues now. I heard what you said, Mr. Thacker. I did when she was telling me that you guys weren't having sex because you claimed you were tired, you said it was because she had an affair. Yes, ma'am. Tell me what happened. Well, she came up with this thing called the sub hub. Yeah. The sub hub is, I guess, uh, somebody that 
That she, take your place when you ain't there? Substitute husband. Substitute husband. And did you, she tell you about the sub hub? She, she... Yes. Barely. She told me about it, but I didn't believe what she was saying. I thought she was just messing around or, or just playing, you know? But then it became real. Do you have a particular sub hub or do you let anybody substitute? Well, I'm not taking applications, Your Honor, uh -huh. if that's what you're asking uh -huh. at this time. However, I have had more than one. I've cheated on him, actually, more than 12 times with multiple partners. <laughs> I mean, if I'm not getting it from him, where am I going to get it from? Sub hub. And you had you've had 12 different sub hubs? No, 12, 12 different, different occasions. Occasions. With a couple of With them. one or two sub hubs. Mm, yes, ma'am. And you told him about it. I did. What did you say? And Russell, why did you say it? I said, Russell, we're not having sex. I need to be fulfilled. You're on the road. You're gone all the time. The grass, the sub hub, not is just for sex, first of all. Let me say mm -hmm. that. They're also for cutting the grass, fixing my car. They're actually with sub hub. Everything a husband does without the paperwork. I think everybody should have a sub hub. It's a wonderful thing. Miss <laughs> Lynch, you know. Every time when I think you've reached the <laughs> penultimate of ratchet, you outdo yourself. And with such calm and ease and just, yeah! Yeah, I run around on him, told him about it too. And I think you ought to do it as well. <laughs> and I'm just like, whoa! Mr. M Mr. Thacker. Yes, ma'am. When you found out about the sub hubs, why did you not roll then? Well, a big reason of it is because I really love her. Mm -hmm. And I felt that I could forgive her and we could get past it, you know. But then the guy started coming to our store. He started calling her. He started uh, texting her via social media. You talked to him? Y'all were friends? No, we weren't friends. <laughs> we weren't friends at all. He came by my store and was asking me about taking pictures. He wanted to have a, a, a camera for his, uh, for his basketball team, you know? And I told him, you could buy mine for $500, you know? But other than that... You know, mm -hmm. your wife doesn't seem remorseful at all she's about not. the things that she's done. <laughs> Has she ever expressed any sort of remorse to you for the things that she's done? I told him I was sorry. Yeah, but if you said it like that, well, he didn't believe you. What Yana, about, I mean, he doesn't give me any attention. What am I supposed to do? Yana, I believe if she was to read one of your books, she would possibly change. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I appreciate the plug and all that, and I think I'm a fairly intelligent woman, and I thought I wrote a couple of good books, but I can't help her. <laughs> <laughs> She needs a Bible, the Koran, <laughs> and then maybe. And I only mean maybe. When Divorce Court continues, is bingo night every night Jervon's way of ending this marriage? Russell is Jervon's sixth husband. If they divorce, should she look for a seventh? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call now. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and join the conversation on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court continues. Ms. Ms. Thacker, you say you have a major problem with Mr. Thacker's hygiene. Yes. Tell me what he's not doing that you think he needs to be doing. Well, he don't... Sometimes he won't even iron his clothes when he goes out in public. And I look like this. He looks like this because I did that. I put all that together for him to come on the show. I have to tell him when to shave, when to brush his teeth, when to put on deodorant. I mean, he has bad hygiene. And mm -hmm. he has bad halitosis, really bad. 
I've talked to him about trying to go to the dentist to get that fixed. Nobody wants to kiss somebody with halitosis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to go over there and hug you. I do, because I feel so bad for you over there. Um, you don't have to respond to those allegations if you don't want to. We can move on to something else entirely. Or would you like to defend yourself? Well, she's, she's completely lying. That's not, that's not true. That's not true. You say that she's, she's spoiled. I don't even know why I'm asking. Uh, <laughs> but... I'm not spoiled. It, it, is there some outrage that she's committed that she hasn't already confessed to? Oh. One, bingo. Uh, what about bingo? Bingo is an every night thing, especially with her mother. And bingo becomes a $108 a day, you know, out of my pocket. How much? $180 a day. Do you spend $180 every day on bingo? Not every day. How many days a week? Maybe five. <laughs> you ever win? Sometimes. <laughs> But bingo is not my thing. I like to go to the casino, but he won't let me go. He won't what? He won't let me go to the casino. Absolutely not. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, good for you. We went to the casino for my birthday. Uh-huh. I got sick. And our anniversary. It is on your birthday. Remember birthday that? And, and anniversary, yeah. yes. Okay, so I gave her my card, reluctantly, and I told her to take $100 out and go and spend, you know, Go and spend that. She called me on the phone crying, saying that she spent $300. Okay, so of course I had to pretend like I wasn't mad. It's okay, it's okay, you know? Because it was our anniversary, I didn't want that to be ruined. Mm -hmm. So the next morning, we took the deposit that we got back from the hotel. She spent that within five minutes and lost it, okay? So I had to take $60, because I don't really gamble. I take $60. Mr. Th Thacker, I have to interrupt you. You said in your papers that your wife wanted to get a divorce year, a year ago, but you thought you didn't want to because you thought it wouldn't solve anything. I can't understand that at all. <laughs> Why don't you, is that what you said? Did, did, that you didn't want a divorce that she asked for a year ago? I believe in marital vows and I take them seriously. Anything can be worked out, okay? As long as we're not beating up each other and, you know, and going through uh, uh, spousal abuse or, or anything like that. What about spousal alienation I, of affection? Yeah, well, let's talk about that. Why do you want money for alienation affection when, in fact, you admit to cheating on him. Well, and he's never gone anywhere on you. I wouldn't have to cheat. I wouldn't have to cheat, Your Honor, if he showed his wife some attention. I don't get anything from him. It's porn. He he's, it has a porn fetish. That's crazy to me. I wouldn't have to have sub hubs if he stepped up to take care of his, his what he's supposed to take care of. Judge Lynn Toller's ruling next. Are you considering marriage but aren't sure that your intended is really right for you? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. It's time for you to call 1-800-282-1991 to answer today's question. You'll receive some valuable offers. Call now. Divorce Court, Judge Lynn Toller's ruling right now. I need to explain what alienation of affection is. It is, it is a cause of action in common law that most states have outlawed by, by, by statute. Very few states allow it anymore. And typically what happens is the typical alienation affection of lawsuit is a woman and man are married, they're getting along, everybody's acting kind of right. Then some hot mama, you know, comes in with her shirt score and just pursues him, then takes him, and then you sue her for taking your man from you. That's what alienation of affection is. 
And that hasn't happened here. He hasn't cheated on you. Oh, oh. Oh, have you? No. He tried. <laughs> but the girl told it on him. She called me and sent me his texts. Miss Thacker, let me say something to you. Uh, I haven't met somebody so wrong and, and, and so happy in her wrong in a very, very long time, and I work at divorce court. Uh, <laughs> you, 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 you seem to have... You have no affection for him. You have no moral compass. Everything is, is determined by how much you need and what you, what you want. I think you go through... I don't know how you get these men to begin with. And you go through husband as soon as they don't give you exactly what you want, you're off and you're on to somebody else. I think you, you've picked a whole lot of bad ones because you look at them for money and not anything else. I think you deserved all that bad stuff you got because you, 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 it, karma is a monster. <laughs> you want to have a life and a love and something worthwhile, you got to be something worthwhile. And to date, you have not demonstrated that. There will be no recovery in this matter. Go, run! <laughs> it is so ordered. Russell and Jervon agree with the judge's ruling. Post a comment or submit your case at divorcecourt.com or call toll-free 1-877-311-2222. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Divorce Court. On Divorce Court today... What happens to a family when a man wants to divorce one sister in order to marry another? Lee and Asia know the answer because he wants to dump her, marry her sister Talia, and the whole mess started on a chat line. Lee Whitcomb and Asia Whitcomb have brought their dispute for Judge Lynn Toler to resolve. Testimony in Divorce Court starts now. Ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is a full plate of tacky with a side of hot mess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you what it is. <laughs> and then you're going to tell me how it got that way. All right. Mr. Whitcomb, you are married to Ms. Whitcomb. Ms. Whitcomb, this is your sister, Talia Maryland. You divorcing her to marry her? Yeah. How'd we get there, Mr. Whitcomb? Well, I, I met Asia uh, and Talia about 12 years ago uh, through a chat line. Uh, Asia had showed up with her sister. Uh, when I initially saw her sister, I knew I was uh, physically attracted to her, wanted to get to know her and stuff like that. But I, I felt like I was already committed to, you know, since Asia came by, I was already committed to, you know, talking with her and mm -hmm. finding out about, you know, where that would go or whatever. Uh, so, you know, we talked and, you know, we were together for a couple years. Uh, eventually, we ended up getting married. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a very noble thing to do, is saying, you know, the woman that I was talking to on the chat line showed up, but I felt compelled to talk to her, even though the sister that came along... Well, you, you know, for security, I'm sure. You know, because you meet a yeah. guy you don't know, you bring somebody else, in case it goes, goes sideways, that you, 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 you continue to pursue a relationship with her out of a sense of honor? I would say, yeah. I didn't want to hurt her feelings since she already had came to see me or whatnot. Look and look where it brought you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You think her feelings are hurt today? Oh, I'm sure they are, and I've apologized for it. Ms. Whitcomb, is that generally an accurate version of what occurred? Uh, yes, all that. But we met them with four guys. He was with three other gentlemen. Mm -hmm. My sister ended up with two of those other guys and then eventually his brother. His brother? His brother. <laughs> <laughs> And I said a side attack. Full <laughs> 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 <Four> bit. <laughs> we got an entire buffet of ratchetness going on down here. <laughs> Low down, class 
is tacky. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And just to answer goodness. your question, I am not sad about this situation. I'm not. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you marry Mr. Whitcomb? Because I... Did you really... Were you really in love? Was he the guy you thought he was? Well, the 19-year-old self that I was, I thought, I, you know, I thought I was. I did love him. Um, but you say he was a total loser when you met him. Yeah, he in was. In what respect? Not much better now. Well, he was living with his mom and, you know, didn't finish school and... Back then, I thought I could change him for to make him a better person. Not oh, we for women me. do that all the time. Oh, yeah. We, 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 I we know rescuing better now. people and all that kind of stuff. You know, you can't marry hope. You have to marry a man. Yes, I understand that. <laughs> and you get the guy you pick, not the one you you believe you can turn him into. Yes. So, be, so, so, so that. But nineteen, I'm gonna forgive you for that. Okay. I'm gonna forgive Thank you for you. that. She, what she I can't. What I don't understand is you weren't attracted to her. You liked her sister. I can understand being polite to her during the initial meeting because you were talking to her on the phone. Right. But after that, you call, hey, you know, it's not, it's, it's not what I thought. And then go, go call her. What, what, what possessed you to marry her? She, she, she was right. You know, I, I was a nobody or whatnot. I didn't have anything. Uh, ended up getting kicked out because I uh, came from a broken home and all that. Uh, but uh, she, she, she did change me. You know, her family did change me. Uh, you know, I went and got my GED. Uh-huh. Be you got in with a better group of people? Yeah. And they showed you a better way? Yeah, yeah. I and in response, you dumped this woman and, and, and take the auto. Well, well things, things changed, you know. Uh, How did they change? She, she wasn't as supportive as I thought she would be. Uh, it turned out uh, it was her family, her mom and her dad, that was really the ones that were you know, telling me that I could change myself, I could so be a better person. So, since it was the family in general, any yeah. sister will do. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Our older sister has enough sense. I, I, I don't want anyone to think that I was sister hopping or anything like that, you know? I uh, uh, definitely... It, it was a, a marriage of convenience, you know? I mean, she... they were. This marriage was a marriage of convenience? Yeah. Not for me, for him, apparently. <laughs> well, obviously, yeah. But, uh, I mean, she just stopped... Uh, she stopped caring or whatnot. She stopped taking care of herself, taking care of the home, uh, especially after, you know, her mother had passed away and we ended up getting the house and stuff like that. I mean, she just let everything go, including herself. Ms. Whitcomb, do you acknowledge at all kind of uh, that you deflated at some point in yes, time and ceased to be fully engaged yes, in the marriage? I do. I do. Okay. Because okay. Um, I was depressed that my mom had passed away. But, um... When we had our, our daughter, because our daughter's first birthday, my mom passed away two weeks later. So I was, you know, kind of thinking. I was kind of in depression, and our relationship wasn't going well. And, you know, he wasn't there like I needed him to be there. I got you. I got you. So I just stopped. You know, I took care of my daughter. The house wasn't always clean, but it never is when you have a toddler running mm. around. But, you know, I... He stopped caring, so I stopped caring. I got you. Next, what shameful secret did Talia keep from Asia about what happened the day before her sister's wedding? Are your in-laws all up in your business and destroying your marriage? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Real people, real conflict, real judgments. Divorce Court continues. She says you, you weren't supportive in her time of need. Do, do you acknowledge that you may have been a little less caring and compassionate than, than you could have been? I mean, I, I probably could have been more compassionate, but uh, without having a, a, a steady male role model until I met her father, uh, I was doing what I saw him do, which was go to work, you know, and, right, and bring right. the money home while her, her mother, you know, took care of the household. Okay. And I thought Ms. we could Marilyn, make it like that. Ms. Marilyn, why don't you come in? Is this around the time when Ms. Marilyn crept back into your consciousness? 
It was actually before all this. How long before? Uh, f like a year and a half, two years afterwards. But she had only always been on my mind. You know, I had always been. You would like... never stop thinking about her. Exactly. Judge. Yeah. Excuse me. Okay. She would come over for holidays, or you know, just come over. Uh, can you get her out of the house? I cannot stand her. Uh, why did you marry him? I cannot stand him. They would. They hated each other for all these years. Mm. Is that so, accurate? Ms. Ms. Marilyn, I'm going to ask you, is that an accurate uh, picture of how you two engaged, or was that just a clever ruse on your part? Well, there was a, a subconscious layer there because I, I told myself that it was off limits to be with your sister's husband, or even when we originally met them. Or anybody's husband. Or, or, yeah, <laughs> or, yes, for that matter, a, a whole other show. <laughs> any, any, any of that. You know, as a side so note. I, you know, I, I said, you know, he's for my sister. They're, they're together. I was actually with his ex-best friend for 10 years. Um, we, you know, we never got officially married, but we were pr pretty much common law married in the state we live in. And so I said, no, he's off limits. For eight years, I didn't look him in the eye. So, yes, I would go over for holidays and birthdays. When did you two start inappropriately touching one another? Well, <laughs> when, um, well, that actually goes right before uh, they got married. I tried to tell her how he had, he had come on to me years before, and she chose to believe him because he denied it. Um, I was with my mom. My mom was still living at the time. The day before their wedding, um, she she chose to believe him, and she chose him over me. Why all the... didn't you, sometime before the day before your marriage, kind of sit her down, t tug her coattail, and say, hey, hey, I don't think this is cool? Oh, I did, because he also had... Uh, as far as how we were raised, we were raised to be all kinds of Destiny Child independent women. That's how my parents raised us. Don't depend on no man to take care of you, this, that, and the other. She was obviously out to lunch during those conversations because she got with him with baggage. He already had four kids with two other baby mamas. And so I was like, he's off limits. You know, let's go. Let's You're leave. telling me that she was <laughs> out to lunch when she, when your parents were telling him to be independent and don't go with a loser, and now you're picking up that Bear. loser <laughs> that you're telling okay. her she I, shouldn't I'll have been in the first place. I understand that. When Divorce Court continues, did Dahlia's failure to learn the lessons about dignity and loyalty lead to a trip to jail? Lee left Asia to marry her sister. Do you think a relationship like that can work? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call now. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and join the conversation on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court continues. Explain that. I mean, I mean, is it that she's done all the hard work, fixed him up, pulled him out of the loser category, so now you're worthy, he's worthy of you since she's done the hard work to get him where he needs to be? That's actually not it at all. Also, what my parents taught us is to, as far as in life, be happy. Be happy doing what you want to do and being who you want to be with. I've always been with... I've always worn the pants and the skirt in a relationship. I'm educated. We, like I said, we were in the same class together. That's how we... Uh, linked back up. She wanted to play a role that my mom did play. As he was saying earlier, my mom took care of my, my, my dad as far as, like, you know, taking care of house and home. That means your man, your house, and then, you know, your children, making sure everything's good for when your man comes right. home. That's how we were raised. She was obviously, again, out to lunch during that time frame because... How can that's you where... be... You know, she was out to lunch. She was out to lunch when my parents taught me this. Did your parents teach you about dignity? Did your parents teach you about loyalty? You. Did yes. your parents teach you about yes. fidelity and life and family? Were you out to lunch when they said be a good person? Were you yes. out to lunch when you said no. don't screw another person's husband? Yes. Were you out to lunch when you say put family first? You should be at least a little ashamed. You should be at least a little embarrassed. Yes. And on top of that, when you take somebody else's husband, don't point at her and say she lost her husband because she was out to lunch when my parents were teaching her the right lessons. But she, but That's she, just she would have so never rude. even it would, he would never been her husband. I understand. And I totally understand. When he first came to me, 
When he first came to me, I said, they're going to blame me. As far as me being the sister, I'm the one that should you, know You better. know why? We're blaming you? Because you're wrong. Right. But the marriage was already over. And I, and I, and I knew that. Because when he came to me. reversed and her husband came to me, I was like, you better get away from me. You're my sister's years. husband. I didn't look him in the eye for but eight years. But eventually you gave in. You gave in, so it doesn't matter. As Mr. Far Whitcomb, as... let me ask you a question. All right. How is your relationship with the remainder of this family, given your 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 your, your change of allegiance here? Well, the the older sister, of course, dislikes me because of the whole situation. Oh, which, she never liked you before that. Which I'm not worried <laughs> about. But uh, the the main person I wanted to talk to was the was the father or whatnot, and, and I did, you know, with. He don't uh, like you either. Her, and what did he say? He was like, as long as you guys are happy, and I take care of my children. And have you been taking care of your children? Uh, you won't let Ms. Whitcomb, now, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a little leeway because okay. they did you ratchet and wrong, but I mean, <laughs> you're gonna have to let me, you're gonna have to let okay. me handle this I fight, will. okay? Yeah. So, do you take care of your children? <laughs> <laughs> when she allows it, yeah. when she allows it. Yeah. When, when, she, when she allows it, because the thing is, is like I was recently put on child support. I was giving her, you know, money orders and stuff like that. But I haven't been coming by just because of the situation. Because she has a new fella that I've heard, or she kind of insinuated she was talking before mm -hmm. I even left. Oh, so, no. so, so big deal. What's that got to do with you not seeing the kids? She won't let us. It's the situation now, you know? Uh, it's, it's always a fight. Do it's you not let calling. him see children? And, 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 and I'm going to hop on you about that <laughs> if that's true. That Sometimes. is not the case. He has not... She's been put in jail for beating him up. Wow. A few times this year. Incorrect. Are you serious? Incorrect. 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 No. Did you go to jail this year? I was there when she, they So the answer is off. yes. What was the charge? It was um, assault cohabitant because we did have a place together. But the thing is, because he does have a conscience and I do as well, the fights would stem from the fights <laughs> would stem from her texting and putting things in his mouth as far as, oh, um, you want to get back with the family and Talia's, you know, Talia's holding me here. So and nothing I just want... you do is no matter how <laughs> ratchet or wrong, any, uh. even if it's an arrestable offense, it's not your fault. It's her fault. Exactly. It's her fault for being weak. It's her fault for it's for, just for easy for being to play hurt. victim for some people. No, I'm not playing victim. Judge Lynn Toller's ruling next. It's time for you to call 1-800-282-1991 to answer today's question. You'll receive some valuable offers. Call now. Divorce Court. Judge Lynn Toller's ruling right now. Before I get done with this thing, I'm going to ask you, Ms. Ms. Whitcomb, you came here, and I'm sure this is general principal money. I get that, and I understand that. But And, and, and I'll award it if it's appropriate. You want $300 to cover his porn bill. Explain yes, that to me. Wow. I was wow. in the hospital having our first daughter. So he takes off, like, pretty much almost as soon as she's born. And about three weeks later, I get a, our cable bill in. They had to have a separate page of all the porn movies that he had watched. M Mr. Whitcomb, what, what is your version of that event? Yeah, I did order porn movies, but it wasn't no three hundred dollars. <laughs> but we we didn't even have a sex life, and that was one of the reasons why. I she was, in, she was no, in, I'm she talking was about in, before she just that. Had a baby. I'm talking about before that. I'm talking about after that. You know, we didn't even have a sex life, so and there, it wasn't no three hundred dollars. But I, I could come up in here and start asking for all kinds of bills that she ran up. Because you want to give me some? How I'm old like, no. is your daughter? <laughs> She is. She just turned six, six. on Friday. Okay. No birthday okay. present, okay. by the I way. I gotcha. I gotcha. I gotcha. But uh, you suffer the sin you sow, Miss Miss Mr. Whitcomb and Ms. Marilyn, and I assume that you're going to suffer greatly at some future date. I don't know if he's going to find somebody else more attractive than you. I don't know if you're going to pop him in the head and go to jail. <laughs> I don't know what's going to go on. But Ms. Marilyn, I would ask you to do this. I have this rule called the rule against tech. Teching. And teching is when you find in, in, in the whole uh, uh, existence of your sin and your, and your failures and your faults and your wrong, you can find one little thing that you can attribute to somebody else and you, are, and you assert that absent that little wrong, all oh, my great sin would yes. not have happened. I asked you not to tech anymore. 
You have to face what you've done or else it's going to fall all over you. You can't keep claiming grand greatness, goodness when you're doing the wrong thing. Thank you just you. can't. You should feel humbled and low and sad, and you should feel tacky and wrong and bad, <laughs> and you should move on. But let me tell you something. You let that man see those kids. As long as he's a good yes. father, he He's should... not, though. He's not. Oh. Uh, Be a better not... man, Mr. Whitcomb. I don't know what's that going on. Sure. So far, yeah. you showed up a jerk in here, right? Yeah. So far, you showed up a guy who does what he needs above what other people need. And, 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 and to me, normally, that does not indicate good father material. You may have a piece of you separated out to be good, and you assert that for your children. That may very well be true, and I hope so. Yeah. I hope so, because it, you know. I just don't feel bad. Uh, I know she's my soulmate, and I am going to marry her. She's yeah, my I best friend. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I got you. I know you don't yeah. feel bad. Attila Hunt Hun never felt bad either. Six, eight, you know, six years ago, he did too much porn. I can't, uh, I can't tag him right yeah. now. I wish you'd have found something else, because I sure would have loved to give you some money, but I can't. Uh, let him see those kids. Be a better man, and, 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 and. Find a conscience somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> there will be no recovery in this matter. This matter is adjourned. Asia appreciates the judge's ruling and is happy to move on from her marriage with Lee. Post a comment or submit your case at divorcecourt.com or call toll-free 1-877-311-2222. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Divorce Court.